Hi, it's Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello, and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are here with Shane Supple, former Ipswich, Falkirk, Old Medellic, um, Crumlin United, and Bohemians, as well as All Ireland 2013 winning Dublin team. Shane, thanks very much for coming out. No problem. Um, so, I just wanted to kind of start off with kind of the early stuff in your career. So, who, who was it home farm you were with, and then you got trials? Yeah, yeah, home farm schoolboy, and in the 12, 13, 14s, you're kind of the lads are starting to go away and get trials across the UK. So, like my team, I think nine of us ended up going away to the UK, UK in the end, and three went to. Ipswich, two went to Burnley and four went to Celtic, you know, so we were quite a strong team back then, but we were going around different clubs, a lot of us, you know, and we uh, we had a few different offers in the end, but uh, I chose, chose Ipswich in the end. Okay, what what, what other clubs were looking at you? Um, Aston Villa, Everton, uh, Southampton, Celtic, uh, Wolves as well, like, so, um, but you had to kind of narrow it down then as you got a little bit older and things were looking like, you know, you're going to get an opportunity to go, and which is, you know, which clubs are, are the ones you you like the most um, yeah and um, what was the the so I was aware that you went you went for a trial with Villa mm -hmm. and uh, Peter Schmeichel was your, your, your idol ground up was he yes he was yeah he would have been yeah I was over there a couple of times and they were probably it was close to signing for them so I supported him as a kid as well and um, okay. everyone thought I was going to go to Villa because there was contracts on the table and everything from them as well and one of the times I went over I was injured um, but they still brought me over and I was with the goalkeepers just standing behind you know um, watching the training and collecting the balls and all that kind of stuff and Schmeichel was there at the time and I thought this was brilliant obviously because I watched him for United you know, for so long and looked up to him and all that kind of stuff and uh, he wasn't the nicest person in the world let's just say that really? Um, yeah uh, he wasn't that kind of maybe I was only young for only 14 years of age and now he was coming to the end of his career and all that so I presume he, he knew that I, I knew him and um, would have probably looked up to him and stuff like that, but he wasn't. Yeah, you think he'd be a lot more welcome, yeah, especially yeah. being a kid and stuff like that. Yeah. You want to introduce people to your club and that, like, that's a bit bizarre. But yeah, but they say never meet your idol, so yeah. and that, that's, that proved it that day, but <laughs> she listened to the own hold against him. Yeah. So then, so what, what was it that made you chose uh, Ipswich in um, comparison to Villa? Just the opportunity, I suppose, and the club itself, how they looked after the players and the opportunity they provided for young lads breaking into the first team. Um, at an early age, it, it was renowned for its youth policy yeah. at the time, and the likes of Titus Bramble, Kieran Dyer, Richard Wright, uh, Scowcroft, all these kind of lads that come through the academy. So, um, and they all went on to do. Yeah, they all went on to English internationals then as well. Um, Darren Bent was there at the time, and Ambrose, they were looking like they yeah. were starting to break through as well. Um, so I, I chose there. The goalkeeping coach was a big factor for me as well. Malcolm Webster was the goalkeeping coach, and the couple of times I was over, I really enjoyed working with him, and I felt he could bring me on and help me improve. And, get me into the first team hopefully at some stage he did the same Richard Roy at 17 years of age he was playing so I thought that was and he was, he was doing well then he went on to play for Arsenal and Everton yeah well, yeah he? he left at 24 I think um, their first year in the Premier League they finished 5th I think Ipswich 4th or 5th they were in Europe next year yeah. Marcus Stewart had one real yeah, season yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, Richard moved on then and went to Arsenal and he, probably his career you were looking at him as being the successor to David Seaman at the time but that never materialised in the end and he went to Everton and West Ham. Kind of went a bit downhill at Everton. He did, yeah, a little bit, you know. Uh, but he ended up back in Ipswich as well. I, I was there when he was there as well for a while, and a, a nice lad. But yeah, I was looking, looking at him and trying to emulate probably what he what he had done at such an early age and get into the first team. I thought I'd, I think I could do that as well, and um, it was the place for me to go to to get into a first team early. Yeah, you know? and yeah, before you got into the first team, he went on to win the FAA yeah. Youth Cup, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Against uh, Southampton. Yeah, they had all the big dogs, and we were the, the kind of the unexpected um, opponents, you know. We had no one really of, of note in our team. They had a, like, so you had David McGoldrick. McGoldrick, Leon Best, uh, Garrett. So at least you had, you had a few yeah. the Irish boys in with you. Yeah, so that was a few. few yeah. Well, they weren't at the time. Well, Leon was at the time. And McGoldrick hadn't declared for him at that stage. Oh, okay. Um, obviously, Walcott was there and that. And Leilana. Leilana played in the middle of the park as well. Yeah, and obviously. I Bell don't think Bell didn't play, did he? Bell was on the bench. He was uh, only st still very young. I think he was only 15, maybe, at the time. So he was on the bench. I know that. But uh, yeah, you look at their team and where they went on and the money some of them went for yeah. in the end. And we, we didn't really have anyone of note. We had a good bunch of lads, but we just got on a good run at the time. And we took it to, uh, I think, the 119 minute to beat them. 
in uh, Pont Moreau. So it was nice. It was great yeah. for us at that age to win something like that. Absolutely. And it was the first time he's won it in 30 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? So it was great for the club and, and the work that the, the coaching staff had done as well at, at that uh, age group as well to get some recognition. Yeah, they must have been excited then to see like the, the players that are coming through. And you look at it now, like David McGoldrick's still there. Yeah, so well, it was, it, David was... Obviously, he played Southampton at the time, and he's he's now a you know I lived switching that. And I remember they were out for pre season a few uh, a few years ago, and um, I was down at the game, and I bumped into him, you know, and he, he remembered from from that day we played each oh, other yeah. in the U Cup, you know. So it's gas the way you, you come back and meet these lads again later, and once full it, circle. fifteen years later or whatever it is, yeah. So it was a good time. Now you um you you were um made your debut was a Joe Royal again to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm actually a huge fan of Joe Royal. Yeah. I've been an Everton fan. So what, <laughs> what was he like? You know, obviously that was your, your big chance. What was he like? He's renowned for being very good to youngsters and giving uh, blood in the mm-hmm. middle. He's a very good man manager. He's a brilliant. He knows how to run a football club, I suppose. Probably an, an old school in that sense. Um, he, was, he was a gentleman as well. You know, and I was, knew how to speak to players and that as well. But yeah, he gave a lot of us. Uh, he seems to handle himself very well. I've been yeah. at events with him Q and A. Yeah, yeah. Very good. I know he is. He's a gent, like you know, and um, he had a lot of time for. I think I suppose at the time at Ipswich we were struggling financially as well, and he had to blood a lot of young lads as well, and um, because we just didn't have the the finances to to get players in and that, and he he did unbelievably well. And one year we just missed out on automatic promotion. I think Wigan and Reading went up that year. We went to the playoffs. We lost to West Ham, and we probably should have got promoted that year. Um, and then after that, again, the, the, the board and the chairman said that the money wasn't going to be available. So a lot of us, that U Cup winning team and a couple of other younger boys got our opportunities and, and Joe was prepared to give us a, a chance and, and back us. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good and he got a lot of um, praise for that as well at the time. A lot of lads went on to do well, although we, we never got promoted under Joe. He does, he does a lot of work for, for Everton. He just uh, sends all yeah. the younger lads out and down and keeps an eye on them and stuff like that for, for Everton. Yeah, yeah, I still actually speak to him now to, to this day, you know, and a couple of lads that I know that are over there and um, would need, you know, a bit of help or whatever. If I need any information off Joe or we're looking for a little bit of help or advice in any area like that, um, he's always there, you know, so. Um, top class. He is, he is, he's, he is top class in fairness to the man. So, that when you made your um, debut against Leicester, Yes, and it was off, away, the, yeah. off the bench. Off the bench. Yeah. What was what was what was that like? Just like, uh, I didn't have any time to think about. It. it was probably the best way for me to go into. It wasn't like you're preparing all the the week leading up to the game, and the night before, and the day of the game and stuff like that. It was just literally a split second. Get on. You have to go and play now. And uh, it was actually lashing down at rain as well, and um, up against a decent Leicester team at the time. Yeah, was that when Sven was managing? Who was I don't know who was the manager at the time? It could have been. I know Dion Dublin was there and I used to, because I sported Villa as a kid as well, so um, he was played up front. So uh, He actually, after the game, we finished, the game we drew 0-0, um, I did, did okay in the game and got a lot of praise for my performance at that, um, and I said in one of the interviews in the paper afterwards that it was great playing against one of my, my you know, heroes or idols as a young lad, um, Dion Dublin, and he... he, he f- saw the report or whatever must have read it and a week later he sent his jersey down to me in the post signed and a little card as well wishing me all the best for the future so it was a uh, nice touch for, for someone like that you know you don't really hear too many things like that in the in the game um, and I still have his jersey to this day but um, yeah that was uh, a nice touch by him yeah now obviously you played under Roy Keane yeah um, what was he like to play under um, and I know it was you. You were coming to a point where you didn't really want to. Yeah, well, I was out alone at the time. Uh, all the money came in towards the end of the season, um, so I wasn't sure. There was thirteen of us out of contract as well, so we weren't okay, sure. Was, it, was there any reason that you went on loan? Or you I went on loan. Uh, Joe Royal took me on loan to Oldham. That's the uh, and I wasn't getting games at the time, and the manager allowed me to go out. I think I went out at the end of January, beginning of February. I went out for the, till the end of the season. Um, just and to that's get games. when he came in, was it? Yeah, I think Roy came in in the March April time, maybe something like that. I think he maybe only had four games, um, at the time. Jim and Jim got the sack at Ipswich, um. So I I wasn't sure. I hadn't met him or anything like that. So when I came back, obviously I had to have a meeting with him to see what was I going to be kept on, um, yeah. for the next season. Um. So I was one of the one of the I think three of us only got contracts, new contracts that were out of contract that year, um, to stay on. But at that stage, I'd kind of mind my mind up that I was going to pack football in anyway. Um, but I signed just to get a few things in order and all that kind of stuff. So I only had about three, four months under Roy. 
Um, yeah, was, was there any reason that you were kind of looking at back in the bit? I was just I was fed up with the game to be honest at that stage where I was at in my in my career and uh, I just had enough of it all, you know, I'd sort of been out alone a couple of clubs and a few Falkirk and all of them and I was getting out to see what we you know, would have changed me. Yeah. Thinking on things and that I didn't so you know, I wanted to come back and, and just get things sorted out over there, tie up a few loose ends. Um, and, and just pack it in basically yeah. so because uh, uh, I've read a few reports saying that you know you'd felt sorry for the fans seeing the way some of the players were acting and mm. stuff like that yeah and that's obviously the reason that made you kind of feel yeah it was way. one of the reasons you know that was did definitely um, was a factor in it you know that I saw the the way the certain lads were around around the place and this was at like an early age like it yeah. wasn't just you know a sudden um, call by me um, I decided to do it over a period of time and um, but yeah, that was a lot of factor and some of the stuff we saw when we were in the playoffs that year and when Joe was there and that and lads were kind of happy that we didn't get to the playoffs or yeah. playoff final or, you know, um, we got promoted, maybe they wouldn't get a new contract and stuff like that. So it was just for me, I was 17, 18 at the time, I was thinking, geez, this is a bit strange. I thought yeah. we were all supposed to be uh, fighting for the one cause here, but um, it wasn't. And just stuff like that, a lot of bits and pieces as well around that I thought this was not the game I thought it was or the place I wanted to be. So. Um, I decided to get out of 22. So, what was it like having someone like the player, like the caliber of Roy Keane, who, who's seen and done it all, especially at club level, um, actually giving you a contract? It must have meant a lot to you that he rated you, because well, he demands a lot. Like, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it was nice, but I don't know whether it was more from the people within the club. He was taking, um, going off their judgment, possibly than, than his own, you know, and they probably had my. Uh, we're saying to Roy that you, you should give this lad a, a contract maybe more so than Roy but obviously he, he did his due diligence on, on me and he thought I uh, was worthy of a contract so um, yeah it was nice and it, like, it was great to play for someone like that you, you know you watched him through the years and he had so much respect for as a player and that you know it was unbelievable um, so it was an interesting few months um, under him and that to see the the way he worked and operated and that you know so yeah no, he, he did get a lot of bad press um, like stories coming out of the media and stuff like that. But um, I was gonna say to you, did, did you ever have any funny stories? Um, and there's a few, like not not too many that I could mention. But um, the one thing that I remember and, and that I probably enjoyed the most uh, was he took us away for a two day training camp to the paratroop regiment in Colchester, only twenty minutes down the road. And we heard we weren't quite sure what was happening, you know. But we turned up anyway. I think it was six or seven in the morning. And, all our phones were taken off us and everything and we were on the bus and we were kind of start coming back down the bus that we were where we were going and um, so we went into this army or the paratroop um, base and we got full kit and um, army gear we were put into teams four different we could call them four sections or whatever it was and um, so three of that three of those sections were players and the other was the management group you yeah. know so we were um, marching um, Judy's all that kind of stuff. Um, there was assault camps and all that, um, and we did make our own camp that night and keep outside and everything like so. Was, and then we were awoke about five in the morning by smoke bombs and everything by the the paratroopers um, getting us up and getting up and we had another type of task to do. And the last one was a really physical one where we I don't know we had to run five or ten k, but we had to carry like stretchers and and logs and all that kind of stuff to get to the end and there was going to be a winning a winning team as well but on the assault course um, we went around um, we, we each team did it and it were time to do it and, and when the management team were going around the rest was kind of g'd them on or supported them and they were coming to the monkey bars you know and Roy was getting up on the monkey bars and he fell off them. <laughs> and he's determined to do it you know but I, I, it just couldn't for whatever reason it couldn't get across on them you know and we are trying to hold back the laughter like the lads, you know, um, because obviously it's it's the gaffer as well. Yeah. So we had to be careful what it was. Well, it was, it was like funny. Make eye yeah, 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 I know, yeah. But it was funny. And we were in there sl- um, shooting ammunition, live ammunition and everything, you know. So it was some experience and we won it. Our, our section won it in the end. Um, but it was I've never um, been as tired in my life finishing something like that. It was unbelievable. But um, myself and John Walters and Garrett McCauley and, we're on in the same team, so I was delighted once I was in Johnny Walters group because you know what you're going to get with Johnny Walters, you know. Yeah. So I was happy about that, and he was probably one of the main reasons why we won it as well, you know. Yeah, um, I, and it's great to see what he's doing now with Ireland and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, no, he's brilliant. Jeez, he must be, he has to be the first name on the team sheet. I think every team he's played in, he's probably been 
because he just gives everything every time he plays, yeah. you know. And he's a he's been a great servant to the to Ireland, you know, as well. And hopefully he'll be able to play some part maybe. Would you still keep in touch with him? At the odd time, you know, I'd see him even at, at, at games or that, or if, if I was over, you know, yeah. or going over to a game or that, um, you'd, you'd get in touch with him or, you know, drop him a line to say, you know, I'll be old, blah, blah, and you'd look after things or whatever, you know, yeah. so, um, but you, you lose kind of touch, it's hard to keep, you know, especially in that game, everyone moves around so yeah, much, exactly, so it's yeah. difficult, but no, he's one of my, one of my favourites, yeah. definitely, yeah. Is he would. Yeah, I know, yeah. I've met a few times at the yeah. training ground, he's always nice as yeah, can be. Yeah, absolute gentleman, yeah. 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 So you, you, you retired then from professional football in 2009? Yeah. And then you came, you came back, was, you, Dublin came, you came back to it, I came back in 2009, went straight back to my club, St. Bridget's, and was there for uh, a good It was the next years. day or something, wasn't it? The next night? Yeah, I went down the next night to training and I just wanted to get back in involved with them and played a few couple of games. The season was coming to an end, played a couple of games with them and got back into the swing of things there. Um, we got to a county final the year before, I lost that 2010. The year after we got to the county final again, we won it. Um, so it was great, you know, a couple of years at the club and really enjoyed that side of things. It was great being back playing with mates and all that as yeah. well. I went to school with so, um, and then in 2013, yeah, I kind of got the chance to go out and, uh, with the dubs and was in the squad when Jim Gavin first season and um, was part of the panel there when they, when they won the All Ireland, you know. So it was a great experience being part yeah, of that. Yeah, well, I don't really know where it is. I wouldn't really call it. I wouldn't class it as a no, I contributing, you, yeah. you know. But yeah, I think the outfit has it somewhere. No, not, not many um, people are going to have that. I know, yeah. No, it is. Like, it's nice, obviously, but um, it was a great experience to be part of that and seeing the way you know that setup works. It's, it's, it's unbelievably professional. Um, although we're amateur sportsmen, um, it's, uh, it's some operation, you know. Our hair is very, 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 very intense training. Yeah, sports. well, there's a lot of competition, obviously, for places as well. and. Um, the training is, is quite tough, um, a lot more physical than I've been used to in, in the UK and that, you know, but again, just so much so many more games in England and in soccer yeah. in general, so I suppose the condition of the GA lads, there's two or three, four weeks gaps between games, so you have to keep them top of it, so that's the way we do it. And then you got back into playing football itself then, was that through Crumlin? Yeah, through Crumlin, I had Martin Lockham was the manager out there and um, I was doing a bit of coaching and he was good to me kind of letting us use the facilities and all that out there so he tried it um, uh, a couple of times to get me back to play but I said man I'm not interested in all that kind of thing and then he was let he was struggling up, uh, uh, towards the end of the sea or the end of the winter for a keeper um, I'd left and he asked me would I fit in just till the Christmas time so I said yeah I can do that this GA season is finished and I said I'll do it I'll help you up until the Christmas and then I'm going back playing with the club again so, and I won't be around it's a grand so I enjoyed it, got back in, great bunch of lads, and he asked me after Christmas, what do you think? And I said, I think I can manage both. He says, listen, you don't have to train or anything like that, just to be, you can play the games, you know? Yeah, well, that was convenient. Yeah, it was nice. You're still keeping fit for playing two Yeah, games, so. exactly, yeah. Um, but I did my best to train as much as I could with them as well. Um, and we went on and we won the FEI FA, FA Intermediate Cup that year. The Viva beating Leather Kenny Rovers 5 nil. We just missed out on the league last game of the season to Bluebell. And I really enjoyed that year. With, with those guys and getting back involved and then a few clubs started contacting me saying would I be interested in I kind of uh, had a chat myself and said I, I think I want to give it a crack again and, and go back playing at that level so I went to went to Bowes and was there anything that gave you a bit of leeway to go there? yeah well the management and the board and that were good enough to say listen we'll allow you play a certain, a certain amount of games for for Bridget's um, so that was a big factor and we got and none of the other clubs would no, which I can understand as well. Yeah, because of course, obviously, you know, yeah, and you're getting paid for playing there and all that kind of stuff. So you could understand that completely. But in fairness to both, they're very good to me, um, and looking after that side of things, and um, I'm still there now. Oh, and uh, you know, I was going to say, to you, do you think the league world has has evolved at all in the last couple of years? Oh, I've seen a, you've seen a lot of players get from the league world now getting into the actual national setup and stuff. Yeah, well, obviously I'm only back in the league a year and a half and I would have kept a certain eye on the league down through the years, you know, but it definitely you look at the Irish squad now and you know how much the League of Ireland has helped that our national team, you know, it's played a massive role and probably doesn't get the credit it deserves for it. Yeah. Um, from within the FEI and, and other circles as well, but and I think it's going to continue to play that role. You look at the lads, obviously Shani Maguire is probably the latest one to go away and only for injury I'd say they'd be in a, 
in and about the squad and coming off yeah. the bench and scoring goals and assisting yeah goals. exactly you know but it just shows what we have here in the league and that lads can go across the water and and, and do it at that level and um, whether it be championship premier league or whatever so um, and I think with the structures changing in the league right down to underage as well I think it's going to be a massive benefit for um, for our players in the future and um, you know, to, to stay here potentially and play in the league and, and then get the opportunity to go across to England, I think it's going to be very difficult to, to ever get a, a player who's going to play in the league and get a cap for Ireland. I can't see that happening. Yeah, it seems to be the magic flight thing. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it is, I suppose. But again, you look at, you know, the level you're playing at over in England and the standard and that as well. Yeah. So well, you can understand that to an extent. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's great. It's great for the league. You know, I think it's, it's helped the profile of it as well. Um, with these lads, the likes of Wes and um, the other lads, Horgan, and getting recognised and, and yeah. getting the caps. So yeah, it is. It's great for the league. Absolutely. Now, it's the, um, there's a couple of quick things I just want to run by. Like, um, how did, with this season, you obviously did too well with Bowes. Do you think next year you just can kick on a bit? Yeah, we're hoping. I think we've probably overachieved a little bit. I think this year, in the sense that we were favourites to be relegated and stuff like that, and um, with the budget we have at our club, um, it's it was the third smallest. I think maybe even second smallest in the league this year. So, I think the management has done unbelievably well to get the players in and to finish fifth in the end was was a was a decent enough season for us. Obviously, Bowes is a massive club, um, yeah, and they'd love to be. We'd love to be up competing with the likes of Corks and Dundalks for leagues and cups and that um, whether that can happen in, in the short term I don't know but um, we we're definitely looking to build something I think at the club and we've retained a number of our players this year and hope we can have one or two to it and we can kick on you know if we've always got to a cup final and finished in the top four with like that that'll be a massively successful season for the for the club so um, I think just looking to build now year on year and, and not I think in, in previous seasons the manager has always been restarting from scratch um, I think this is the first year he's probably not the club where it looks like he's not starting from scratch. You know, we've got a, a good core group of players there, and if we can add to that, who knows what could happen? Yeah, well, I mean, between yourself and Dinny and that, like that, these are very good. You're a very good uh, age for a goalkeeper mm. as well. Like you go for a good number of years still. Hopefully, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, avoiding injuries and stuff yeah. like that. So, I mean, if they can build on that, that would be fantastic. And then get in see how he's going to do over the next couple of seasons if they can kind of keep the group together yeah that's the, that's the idea and I think it's, it's looking like that you know the, the likes of Dini and um, Derek Pender as well our captain um, a couple of young boys have come in and done unbelievably well this year Oscar Brennan and um, Fouad as well um, Warren O'Hara has come in only 18 year old, years of age centre half and he's done really well so those the experience they've gained this year and adding to next the squad next year I think we could uh, hopefully you know kick on well, um, that's great thank you very much for coming on the show it's okay. been an absolute pleasure and uh, hopefully we'll get you on again sometime yeah absolutely uh, maybe I might even come out and do some, uh, take some shots on you out and train <laughs> you're more than welcome anytime uh, if I score I can say uh, <laughs> score against uh, a former Ipswich town yeah. I'll, so. I'll take that um, guys if he wants to uh, get any more League of Ireland players on or anything we can do or if he wants to try and Go into the, say, Bohemians or Shamrock Rovers or Cork City, Dundalk, any of those sort of type of clubs, and uh, meet some of the players or something like that. Get in touch, leave some comments, tell us what you think. Um, don't forget to subscribe. We're aiming for 1,000 subscribers before Christmas. We're at 662, I checked this morning, so if you could please get on and help us out. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.